Timothy, one seven second Timothy, one seven second Timothy, one seven second Timothy, one seven. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. 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 I have power and love and a sound mind. I have power and love and a sound mind. I have power and love and a sound mind. I have power and love and a sound mind. Get away, devil, it's our time here with God. There is no fear. With his power and love, the devil won't come near. Power, love, and a sound mind. Get away, devil, it's our time here with God. There is no fear. With his power and love, the devil won't come near. Fear has no access. Fear has no access. He has given me power power and love so fear has no access no access here fear has no access yeah the devil won't come here fear has no access he can't even come near he has given me power power and love so fear has no access it's time to learn and grow. So get out your Bible, your notebook, your pencil, and write down what stands out to you today because the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. It's now time to learn and grow. All right, 2 Timothy 1.7, you can go there in your Bibles or you can look it up on the screen. We're talking about the fact that fear has what? No access. Fear has no access. But here's the thing. Fear will come if you open the door. You have to refuse to open the door to fear. And if the door's been opened to fear, you have to reject fear and accept what? Look what the, the Word of God says that God gave us. 2 Timothy 1.7. You can read it in your Bibles or on the screens. It says, for God has not given us what? A spirit of fear. So fear does not come from who? God. God. Fear doesn't come from God. But what comes from God? Power, love, love and a sound mind. So just like I don't allow fear access, well, I have to choose to allow that spirit of power, that spirit of love, and that spirit of a sound mind. I have to give that access in my life. Well, how do I give power, love, and a sound mind access into my life? Well, the entrance of the word brings light. The entrance of the word reminds me of, according to Ephesians 1.3, all of heaven has been deposited in me. The spirit of power, the spirit of love. The Bible says in Romans 8.6, I believe, the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart. Luke um, 10.19, yes, Luke 10.19, I give you all power and authority. The Bible says that you have the mind of Christ, right? So whenever I get in the word, when I spend time praying in the Holy Spirit, listening to him, that brings light and it shines the light on what's on the inside of me. But here's the thing. The enemy wants us to accept fear because what does the entrance of fear bring into your life? If the word brings light, what does fear bring? Darkness. Darkness. And in the dark, it's hard for you to see things. Do you understand? Have y'all ever been in like a pitch black dark room and it's like your eyes don't adjust? It's like sometimes when you're in a room and it's super dark, it's like eventually your eyes adjust. But just like Pastor Kathy talked about, I believe it was in a coffee with PK or sometime, about a time whenever she went to Carlsbad Caverns and they'd go all the way down to the bottom of the cavern and they turned off the lights. And she said she couldn't even, her eyes never adjusted. 
She couldn't even see her hand in front of her face. It was that dark. Well, that's exactly what the enemy wants. That's why he wants you to give access to fear because fear creates darkness. And no longer do you see the fact that you're a child of the most high God, that you're called, that you're chosen. No longer do you rise up in power when situations come. No longer do you respond in love when people do things or say things. No longer do you have a sound mind. You have a logical mind. Why? Because if the enemy can get you in fear, he can keep you from tapping into the life of God that's on the inside of you. And if you're not walking in the life of God, then what are you showing people? Fear. Fear. You're showing people just plain old Fear. self. <laughs> plain old self. Gosh, and y'all are all amazing. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. But the Bible says that without him, we are nothing. And so I need him, right? So how do I tap into this spirit of love, power, and a sound mind? I get into the word. Because every time, the entrance of your word brings light. So as I get into the word, as I hear the word, what happens? I'm reminded of the power of the love of the mind that I've been given. And then I'm able to walk in it. But if I've given access to fear, then what happens? If I give access to the word, there's light. If I give access to fear, there's darkness. Boys, tell me, whenever I give access to the word, what comes? Light. Light. When I give access to fear, what comes? Darkness. Why does the enemy want believers walking around in the dark spiritually, trapped in fear, gripped with fear? So they can't see and they fall? Why else? What does he not want them to walk in? Those three things that God gave. Sasha? Power, love, and a sound mind power, love. He doesn't want you walking in power. Why? Why doesn't he want you in power? He wants you defeated. Because if people see you defeated that are in the world and they're defeated, why are they going to serve God? He doesn't want you walking in love. Why not? Because he knows faith works by love. If you're walking in love, then your faith is on a whole nother level and you're manifesting the presence of God every moment of every day. The enemy doesn't want that. That's why it's so important that we say fear, you have no access. So we're talking tonight about a specific fear called, if you're taking notes, you can write this down, the fear of man. The fear of man. Well, what does that mean? I'm not talking about being afraid of people. I'm talking about being afraid of what people say, being afraid of how people see you. The enemy uses this in believers' lives, and it's very subtle because we can find ourselves doing things and acting certain ways, even though those things may seem, may seem right, may not seem bad, but the motivation is so that other people approve of us. That's called the fear of man. I'm going to do what I do for the approval of man. And y'all, that's a wrong way to live. People that have the fear of man are easily offended. They become very bitter. They burn out and they walk away from their destiny because they have the fear of man. Instead of conforming their lives, what does Romans 12, 1 and 2 say? Do not be what? Conformed to this world, but what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to this world. The Bible also says, come out from among them and be separate. Each of you are individuals. Look at your finger. Does everyone have a fingerprint? Yeah. Everyone has a fingerprint. And nobody on the planet that ever has been born. And y'all, there's been a grip of people born. And anyone else that will be born, guess what they do not have? The same fingerprint. No one can do what you're called to do. And so in order for you to live out your destiny, live out the call God has on you, you can't conform to someone else's fingerprint. You can't conform to someone else's destiny. You have to do your destiny. But guess what? The fear of man will cause you to conform and step out of your call and in the shadow of someone else's. 
because you won't be able to do someone else's call. Do you understand? You may be able to follow along, but you're, you'll find yourself never satisfied, never fulfilled, wondering what's going on. Why aren't things happening in my life? Well, it's because instead of just doing what you were called to do, you became fearful of the approval of man. Someone called you to ministry, but you were fearful that if you were in ministry, then stuff wouldn't happen or people would make fun of you. And so you stepped out of that and you stepped into someone else's shadow of business. And then what happens? You're not fulfilled. You're not satisfied. You're not sinning. Do you understand? You're not sinning. You're not like, you're not making, like, you're not killing. You're not committing adultery, but you stepped into someone else's call. You conformed yourself to someone else and you can't do it. You'll not be fulfilled. There will be no fruit. Y'all, a shadow can't do what I can do. Do you understand? A shadow can't do. Just like that little shadow right there, that shadow on the wall. Do y'all see the shadow on the wall? It cannot eat. Okay? Can that shadow eat? Heck no. Can that shadow get on its knees and magnify and glorify God? It can do nothing. Do you understand? It is conformed to me. It is, it is totally dictated by me. That's what the fear of man does. It makes you dictate your life based on someone else's. And that's not what we're supposed to do. Who are we supposed to be conformed to? The image of God. I want to be conformed to the image of God. The person that he created me to be. But the fear of man. Look what the Bible says. Go in your Bibles to Proverbs 29, 25. What does this mean, fear of man? Let, let's say God told, God told Ellis, Ellis, I need you to go and talk to that person about Jesus. There's other people around. God tells Ellis, Ellis, go talk to that person about Jesus. That person may be like the cool kid or that person may be, have a lot of their friends around. But the Spirit of God told Ellis to go talk to that kid. This is what the fear of man would do. I know that I've given access to the fear of man whenever I say this. They don't need Jesus. I think they go to church. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to them. What if they make fun of me? What if they say something to me? What if they reject me? See, that is fearing man. Instead of honoring God, what did Ellis just do? He honored them. Instead of honoring God, what did Ellis just do? He honored them. He honored their opinion over the opinion of God. What's going to come of that? Nothing. See, whenever you embrace the fear of man, well, if I don't do this, then they'll judge me. No one is watching you, okay? Like nobody, if you really think about it, like nobody really cares. Do you understand? Now, if you're supposed to do something and you're supposed to be held accountable, that's one thing. That's not, that's not the fear of man. That's saying I need help and I'm going to get help and I'm going to do what I know to do from the inside out. But I'm talking about if God tells you to do something and you stop yourself because of someone else's opinion. Well, what if my mom says I can't do that? What if, what if my parents say that that's not for me? You know, some of you during revival, a lot of you came up and you knew you were called to ministry. Do you know you're going to have to fight for that? There's going to be people. There's going to be teachers. There's going to be counselors. There's going to be parents that say, mm -mm, no, but you know, no, I'm called to do this. This is what God has called me to do. And you'll either honor their opinion that goes against the word of God or you'll honor God. See, I have to choose to honor God. If it goes against the word of God, who am I honoring? If it goes against, if someone says something against the word of God, who do I honor? If it goes against the word of God, who do I choose to honor? I have to honor God. Say it. Say, I have to honor God. Y'all, because mommy and daddy ain't going to be there at the end of your life. Do you understand that? And you go against your conviction. You go against what the word of God says. And all of y'all are blessed. You have parents that are in church. So they, they're, they're probably not. And if you don't have parents in church, you're blessed because they let you come by yourself. And gosh, I commend you for that. But do you understand that like if there comes a point where other people don't choose it, I still have to choose it. I still have to decide I'm going to honor God. If everyone else walks away, I'm not. I'm either going to honor God 
or I'm going to live in the shadow of somebody else and never fulfill the destiny that's on my life. And y'all, being a shadow is worthless. My shadow right now, where'd it go? Here it is. It can do nothing in and of itself. It just follows me around. And you weren't created just to follow someone else's destiny, just to do someone else's call. You were created to do your call. So you're going to have to decide. I'm either going to be honoring men or have the fear of men and be so concerned. Well, what if they do this? Well, what if they do that? What if you honor God? God never fails. God never, never, never is faithful. Even when we're unfaithful, he remains faithful, right? He never fails. But guess what man will do? They'll fail. Y'all, our government, do you know how many people put their trust in the government? And they failed. When Fauci said, hey, take the vaccine. Once you take the vaccine, you'll be good. And people are dropping like flies after they take the vaccine. And now they're saying that they don't even have to put that they had the vaccine. They can lie on the death certificates. It's twisted. That system will fail, but God will never fail. I have to decide, who am I going to honor? Well, God says to honor the government. God says to honor the government if it doesn't go against the government of the word of God. I'm not falling for the, for the lies of the enemy. I'm not going to honor man. If man's not honoring God, deuces, I'm out. I have to honor God. I'm going to stand before him right now with your friends. Well, you know, you don't need to do that. You don't need to be so bold. You don't need to be so loud about Jesus. Oh, yes, I do. People are dying and going to hell. And no fair that me and you have a church where we have parents that come to church and there's people that are lost. What? I'm going to be quiet. Well, no, what if they make fun of us? What if they reject us? What if they get saved? What if their whole family gets changed because you just opened your mouth and did what God told you to do? Do you understand? I can't have the fear of man. I can't think I'm not going to do what God's called me to do because people might reject me. Let them reject me. Let them take my life. Y'all, there's people in other countries right now. There are kids that are literally giving their life because they refuse to honor what man says. They say, no, I'm going to honor God. I'm not going to deny Jesus. I'm not going to deny Jesus. Are you kidding me? Just like Pastor Dean says, my last breath here is my best breath. I'm not denying Jesus. If I don't take a stand for the truth, then what happens? This is what I am all the time, my whole life. I'm a shadow. I'm a shadow. I never tap in to the call and the destiny that's on my life. Why? Because I've just conformed my, my life, my, my opinions, my everything to other people. And y'all, their promises won't come through. But God's promises, they come through. Look what it says in Proverbs 29, 25. I didn't forget. It says this, the fear of man. Hello, the fear of man. Every day, I'm either honoring God. Now, what does the Bible have to say about your parents? Children, what? Obey, Obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. When your mom says clean your room, guess what? You need to clean your room because in honoring your parents, you're honoring God. Now, if there ever comes a point, just like Pastor Dean and Kathy had to decide, their parents weren't about it. They were already out of the house and they had to choose. I'm either going to honor God or I'm going to have the fear of man. I'm going to honor man. And I have to choose to honor God. And guess what? They've been blessed. Do you understand? They've been blessed. They've lived longer than their parents. Do you understand? They've been blessed. They've been healthier. Do you understand? Pastor Dean has lived longer than his parents lived. Why? Because he said, I'm going to honor God. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to honor God. And there, hopefully, prayerfully, that doesn't ever, ever come to that point. But if it ever comes to that point where someone says to you, hey, you have to do this or else. No, I have to honor God. I'm not afraid of what you do to me. I'm not afraid if you, if you take my life. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Paul, the disciples, they were beheaded because they refused to give in. I think that's a pretty cool bunch to be a part of. Do you understand? Like, I would rather honor God. I would rather get into heaven and say, man, did y'all see that? I didn't fold. I stood strong. They took my life. They thought they had me, but look at me now. Here I am up in heaven with the creator of the universe, with Jesus, right? Gosh, I'm not going to have the fear of man in any area of my life. Fearful, having to perform, having to be something. Because look what it says. I still haven't got there. The fear of man brings a snare or a trap. The fear of man brings a snare or a trap. You know, it's kind of like in Peter Pan, whenever the shadow 
is gone, Peter Pan's shadow like goes and he gets in the drawer and he goes everywhere. Well, what does he end up doing? He has to, he has to like get it, he gets it trapped in the drawer, grabs it, and then he sews it back on, right? And now the shadow is what? On him, stuck with him, right? You're stuck with him. The fear of man, honoring man over honoring God traps you. you you're stuck. You never progress. Well, I just feel like, you know, there's so much in me. Well, gosh, you've conformed your whole life to the opinions of other people. You'll never tap in to who you really are when you are fearful of what man has to say. Y'all, because if you look in the Bible, like it wasn't like normal stuff that these people did. Noah built a boat. Elijah and Elisha, you know, they wore weird clothes. Um, John wore weird clothes, was in the wilderness eating crickets and honey. Like you have to camel's hair. You have to get to a point where you're like, I'm not living my life for the approval of man. I'm not living my life. And when you get older, like, I'm not doing what I do for a paycheck. Well, if I want to get paid, no, I have a supply that never runs dry. I've got to pick a team. I'm either going to honor God or I'm going to be afraid of man. I'm either going to honor God. Mark's in here today. And they said, you're going to get, you have to get the vaccine. And guess what Mark said? Shove it. I'm not getting that. Mark, do you still have your job? Where's Mark? He's actually on a call with his job. Do you understand? I'm not bowing. You bow, you burn. You have to decide. I'm going to honor God. And y'all, you start now. Because guess what they're trying to do? They're trying to get you to be afraid, to fear. Well, if you don't do this, if you don't do this, well, if you don't do that, then you're not going to be able to travel. If you don't do that, then you're not going to be able to, to buy food. Really? What happened with Elijah in the wilderness? Did he have a grocery store? What happened? What does the Bible say? What happened? He lived in the wilderness, and how did he eat? God provided for him how? Ravens brought him bread, and there was a stream that didn't run dry. Birds, okay? If the birds have to come and feed me, I'm going to be caught honoring God. Well, I just, I just don't know if I, can, if I can do that. I just don't know. You can. You are well able. If you shut the, door for, uh, shut the door to fear, the light will come in. You get in the word. You begin to see the power, the love, the mind that is on the inside of you, even a creative mind, right? I'm not going to conform to man and do what they want me to do. I'm going to conform to God, and there's going to be supernatural ideas. The guy that created the universe, who put stars, balls of light in the sky, a huge fireball in the sky, a system of growing that like a seed goes down and then it makes roots and then it crops up and then there's food. There's so like this guy is creative. He's going to give me an idea so I don't have to be fearful of what man can do for me or how they can provide for me. No, God will show me exactly what I need to see. But guess what? It starts now. When God tells Poseidon, Poseidon, go and talk to that kid. I either honor God or I'm fearful of man. We can't allow the fear of man to have access in our life. Look what it says, last verse, and then I'm going to close. I'm going to give us an opportunity if we're not saved. Go to Psalms 118, verse 6. Y'all, I would encourage you. Firstborns especially, listen. It doesn't matter what people have to say. It doesn't matter. If you're a firstborn, raise your hand. You're the oldest of your current siblings. You're the oldest. You're the oldest. Raise your hand if you're the oldest. Listen. I want you to hear my words. You don't have to perform. You don't have to put on a show. Listen, are y'all listening, firstborns? Do you know what you need to do? You need to honor God. Just honor God. He loves you. He's got you. There may be people that don't get you. There may be people that reject you. There may be people that walk away. But guess what? He will never leave. He will never walk away. And the Bible says that he will bring people for your life. He will help you in your life. You will be fully satisfied. All you have to do is decide, I'm going to honor God. I'm going to honor God. I'm not going to live my life to, for the approval of man, afraid of what people will say. Y'all, people will say mean stuff. People will say rude, unnecessary things. People will talk bad about you. Do you understand? They'll talk mess. They'll say mean things. But guess what? God won't. God won't. And God knows exactly what he told you to do. And he will sustain you. It doesn't matter what people say. Look what the Bible says in Psalms 118. What did I say? Verse 6. The Lord is on my side. And more importantly, now under the new covenant, he's in me. The Lord is in me. I will not fear. Say, I will not fear. Will not fear. Look what it says. What can man do to me? What can man 
do well, you know, they can laugh at me. Okay. How many of y'all have ever been laughed at? Probably everybody. Now, look around. If, if your hand's raised, look to someone else whose hand's raised and see if they're alive. See if they're able to move and breathe. Is everyone that has a hand up, they're still alive? They're still able to move and breathe. How many of you, someone's ever talked bad about you? Raise your hand. Someone's talked bad about you? Raise your hand. Said mean things to you behind your back? Gosh, it kind of hurt. Look around. Everybody, hands who's raised? Is everyone whose hands raised? Are they breathing? Are they breathing? They're able to blink? Wow. Guys, the people could laugh at you. The people could say mean things. But look, you're here. Do you understand? They couldn't take you out. What can man do to me? I have the power of God on the inside of me. I have the love of God shed abroad in my heart. I have the mind of Christ. What can man do to me? Y'all, it makes no sense to conform my life to the opinions of others. When I have a God who loves me, who called me for a very specific purpose, I wasn't created to be a shadow in someone else's destiny. I was created to walk in the destiny that God made me for. But guess what? I'm never going to walk in that destiny if I have a fear of man. If I'm constantly concerned, well, what are they going to say about me? What are they going to think about me? What are they going to say? What are they going to do? What's going to happen? Guys, I have the word. And if you don't know about the power, the love, the sound mind, you got to get in the word. Because the enemy wants you to stay in the dark. Because a believer that's walking in the power of God, the love of God, the mind of God, no demon in hell can stop them. Say, that's going to be me. No more fear of man.